<laughs> I've never been, but Cleveland seems like a real kip. I did a video on the disastrous Balloon Fest 86 in Cleveland and I got a bunch of Cleveland people in the comments. You would think they'd be defending themselves, but no, they just seemed happy to be mentioned. Actually, I'd say they were downright proud that the misadventure took place in Cleveland. Normally when I poke fun at people, they call me every name under the sun as a result, but these people love me like one of their own. It must be the only place in the world that you can insult and ingratiate yourself to the local population. Many even suggested I do videos on all the other dreadful things that happened in Cleveland, because apparently there's a long list. So today I'm going to be looking at one such event. It's another case of good intentions gone hilariously awry. It's 10 cent beer night. It was the 29th of May 1974. Major League Baseball's Cleveland Indians face off against the Texas Rangers in Arlington Stadium, Texas. I'll do my best to describe what happened, but please forgive me if I make mistakes. We don't play baseball in Ireland and there's so many terms and rules for this goddamn game. In the fourth inning, Rangers player Lenny Randall disrupts a play with a hard slide. This is not forgotten by the Indians, who in the eighth inning retaliate by pitching the ball behind Randall's head. This is often seen as a deliberate attempt to injure the batter as their natural instinct is to lean back. Randall bunted, that is, he loosely tapped the ball into play, and as the pitcher retrieved the ball and tried to tag him, Randall forearmed him. This leads to the Indians' first baseman punching Randall, and the bench is clearing for a brawl. As a side note, Wikipedia describes a bench-clearing brawl as a form of ritualistic fighting that occurs in sports, which makes it sound like it was written by an alien observing the human race and their customs. The brawl was broken up and no one was even ejected, but when the Indians returned to their dugout they were pelted with food and drink thrown by the Rangers fans. The Rangers won, 3-0. After the game, Rangers manager Billy Martin was asked if he was worried about retaliation when they played the Indians in their home turf the following week. He responded no, saying that the Indians don't have enough fans to be worried about. Famous last words, Billy. Reminds me of all the times in college I said I wasn't worried about the topic I hadn't studied coming up in the exam. With the power of hindsight, I can say 100% of the time I should have been worried. In the build-up to their next match, Cleveland radio host Pete Franklin spent the next week rallying Indians fans to come to the match in response to Billy Martin's comments. The Indians announced that beers would only cost 10 cent for the game, a discount from the regular 65 cent to attract fans. All the pieces were in place for the Indians fans to show the Rangers they had not forgotten the fracas at the last game. Cleveland newspaper The Plain Dealer even printed a cartoon of Chief Wahoo holding boxing gloves with the caption, Be ready for anything. Huh. I guess he's the Indians mascot. Hmm. Is this racially insensitive? I don't know. I don't want to get in trouble. I think I'll just leave this one up to the Americans. It's got nothing to do with us. Ah, here. What's this? The day finally came, June 4th, 1974. You could get 355 milliliter cups of 3.2% beer for 10 cent. Very low percentage alcohol, but it adds up. You were limited to six beers per purchase, but you could just keep coming back anytime you needed some more. So you'd be getting fairly tipsy for just two or three dollars. And get tipsy they did. The existing bad blood between the teams and the cheap alcohol made for one hell of a cocktail. The game was plagued with problems from the start. A woman ran out and flashed, a streaking man ran around the field, a father and son joined the field to moon the crowd. And as they drank more, the crowd only became more belligerent. Rangers pitcher Ferguson Jenkins took a line drive to the gut and collapsed, and the fans only cheered and chanted to hit him again. I guess they wanted the batter to finish him off or something. Maybe the rules of this game are more interesting than I give credit for. Fans also repaid the debt owed to the Rangers by hurling food and drinks at them, just as the Rangers fans had done to the Indians the first time around. But the mood was a lot darker now, and bottles and ripped up pieces of seats were being flung into the field. Someone even threw firecrackers into the Rangers' bullpen. Another one of the many field invaders ran on to try and steal a Rangers cap. In the ensuing altercation, the Rangers player lost his balance and ended up on the ground. Thinking that the fan was attacking the player, Rangers manager Billy Martin called his team to grab their bats and charge. This Billy Martin guy doesn't seem to possess a great deal of foresight, does he? When the fans saw the Rangers charging into battle, they did the same. Only there was 25 Rangers and 200 fans. And the fans had weapons too. 
and I'll shove that bat up your ass and turn you into a popsicle. A full-scale riot began to break out. Cleveland manager Ken Aspermonte realized the Rangers' lives might be in danger and called his team to grab their bats and defend the Rangers, which meant the Indians had to attack their own fans to help their rivals. In the ensuing riot, many players, officials and fans suffered injuries from being struck with fists, boots, bats, chairs and rocks. The stadium security were unable to keep control, but eventually enough police arrived to disperse the crowd as the Indians escorted the Rangers to their bus. The stadium was damaged, the bases were torn up and stolen, many received nasty injuries, though thankfully none were serious. A dozen people were arrested, but perhaps most tragically of all, the game was forfeited to the Rangers, which was a shame for the Indians as they had a rally which saw them go to 1-5 to 5-5 before the riot. On the brighter side, it was nice to see the Indians players put the bad blood behind them and rush to their rival's aid. And of course the whole event is another feather in Cleveland's cap of being a shithole full of unsavoury people. And that feathered cap is their crowning achievement. I have to say, I very much admire their spirit. People of Cleveland, please accept this video as a token of my admiration. Your city is a dark and desperate place. Keep the video topics coming.